Hello and welcome back! In this video, we are finally onto the mitering and notching of the seat stays. We'll be using the uh, nifty seat stay miter fixture that we made in the last video. And uh, if you are just dropping into this channel now, feel free to keep watching. But after, you might want to jump back and watch some of my older stuff if you enjoyed this video. With that said, let's get started! Just in case you are new, we will be working on the seat stays as seen here on my daily commuter bike. And I already bent the seat stay and cut them to general size. Here is one of them. The first thing we'll do is set up this uh, somewhat chaotic and hard to use tire reference fixture I made. Here I'm measuring and adjusting the distance from axle center. And now I need to get the tire reference on the center line which is 4 inches out from the 8020 extrusion. I was uh, able to simply get a square in there and get it adjusted. Here it is centered. And now I'm throwing the uh, seat stays on to get a rough idea of the tire clearance, and it looks good. You can see here that my seat stays overlap, so I need to uh, cut them so they are sitting on the same plane without interfering with each other. So I'm using the bandsaw to cut off the overlapping material, but I messed up and gouged part of the uh, tubing. Here's the spot where I damaged it. I, I think the uh, seat stays are the hardest part of the frame to fit up and cut. I just was uh, so paranoid that I would cut off too much material, but uh, after I gouged the tube, I kind of threw caution to the wind and decided to just cut it, so uh, I did. And uh, here they are fitting without any overlap. And one last check against the side view drawing. Now I need to mark where the miter saw will cut the tube. I'm measuring from where the center of the seat stay contacts the seat tube to the seat stay dropout end. It measures out to 420 millimeters. To be uh, extra safe, you're going to want to check that measurement on the side view of the frame as well. Here I'm marking the seat stays. And uh, something to note, make sure you're marking the bottom side of the seat stays since they will be fixtured upside down when making the miter cut. Alright, so uh, the next thing is how do I get the seat stays in the fixture and in the correct location? I decided to use my drawing, but to do that I need to remove the clamping block so that the fixture can sit flat onto the drawing. Here's the fixture with the centers marked on both sides. I'm using 1, 2, 3 blocks to line up my edges against the drawing. With those lined up, I tighten down the V positioning blocks and securing bars.
here it is all buttoned up. But I almost forgot I need to first notch the seat stays for dropouts before I make the seat tube miter cut. So I got a wild idea and thought maybe I can notch the seat stays uh, while still in the fixture. And the question is, will it fit? So, um, and they fit. Now uh, it's just a matter of uh, giving the vice jaws something to clamp onto. And uh, yeah, that'll do block, that'll do. Here I'm touching off the saw onto the top of the tubing, zeroing out my DRO, and then lining up my cut. I'm doing this so that when I notch the other seat stay, I can measure down and land the cut in the same place. I started off cutting with the RPM up all the way in low gear, but I could hear a chatter as if one tooth on the blade was trying to catch. So to combat this, I put it in high gear at higher RPM. And while it was still fixtured up, I thought, why not just make this cut to size rather than file it later? So that's what I did. And before notching the other seat stay, I checked the cut against my drawing and it all looks good. So off camera I flipped the fixture and did the same on the other seat stay. And now it's mitering time. By the way, back uh, when, in an earlier video, I was showing the hole saw arbors I purchased from Paragon Machine Works. And I mentioned getting a long arbor for no reason back then, and I didn't know why I would ever need it. Well, I found out this is why. Touching the center finder off both seat stays to get my center. And again, the same deal here for RPM, I had to turn it up to account for the slop on the whole saw. If the saw were to catch, that would be a complete disaster, so I took no chances here. Remember that bit about throwing caution to the wind? Well, yeah, you can see the saw did not quite reach the edge of the tube. I took off just a bit too much. So uh, I dialed it in just one more millimeter, made the cut again, and just barely uh, reached. Okay, so the other seat stay was fine, but I knew this one would be trouble. So you can see the gap here where it didn't quite reach. 
off camera I filed that one seat stayed down and here it is now a good fit now it's time to shape the dropouts by the way I want to give a special thanks to Jacob Paulson for recommending I shape the dropouts before welding them to the chain stays I took that to heart and that's why I moved right on to the seat stay fit ups before uh, welding anything more so uh, yeah great tip thank you Jacob you guys are wicked smart Okay guys, that's a wrap. In the next video, I will be doing something I should have done a long time ago. I will build a small alignment table. Yep, before I do any more anything, I really need to get this frame aligned. So alignment table it is. Please drop in for that and I'll see you guys later.